All right, let's go. Nice recovery in the stock market yesterday. Uh, uh, yesterday, nice recovery today, I should say. Now, what I said yesterday, following that Fed move. Okay, so what do we have? We have the Fed, uh, which stopped the rate hikes. Basically, in January, they confirmed that, or at least they confirmed that in their own outlook in this meeting yesterday. They said, no more rate hikes for the rest of this year, and only one rate hike in 2020. That's what they said, but they also, of course, are basing it on incoming data. But right now, the way they feel is that it's not going to be necessary to raise interest rates. We'll see. Interestingly, the um, expectation towards inflation right now is that is going, it is going to stay very low. And the Fed mentioned in its statement yesterday that low oil prices were a factor in keeping inflation down. However, look at the recovery we have seen since December in oil prices. Went from $42 a barrel to $60 a barrel. Gasoline went from a buck 40 wholesale, uh, the NYMEX gasoline to uh, 193. That's a 35% increase in the price of gasoline. It's maybe not showing up in the pump yet, but it will. And I have a feeling that the oil price rally has much farther to go, and there are uh, a number of reasons for this. First of all, we know that OPEC, the OPEC plus nations, OPEC plus Russia, they have been cutting production, and the Saudis have been dramatically cutting their production and cutting their exports. That is behind some of the recent drawdowns we are starting to see now in U.S. crude inventory, okay? It's really been that cutback in Saudi exports to the United States. Russia is about to kick in higher levels of production cuts starting in April, all right? They're, they're not up to what they committed to yet. They cut, but they're going to cut more in April. But the real situation here is really not so much about crude quantity, it's about crude quality. And by that I mean there is an acute shortage of sour crude. Now sour crude is what the refineries use to make things like diesel fuel. And diesel fuel, demand for diesel fuel is exploding. Okay, a lot of developed countries now uh, because of um, higher levels of economic activity, trucking, construction, all that stuff, the consumption of diesel fuel is going way up and the limits now because of the Venezuela situation on sour crude is really creating this very interesting situation in the oil markets where it's more about crude quality. What kind of crude? The crude from shale oil here in the United States is sweet. It's light crude oil and that's basically refined into plastics. You're talking about plastic bottles, you're talking about straws. I mean straws, they're being banned all over the place. So we can have an abundance of uh, light crude, sweet crude here in the United States. And by the way, those inventories, those crude stocks are coming down as well. But the real situation is in that sour crude, and that could cause some very interesting uh, problems as we go down the road and the availability of that gets tighter and tighter. You look at gasoline, gasoline spreads, um, you look at diesel fuel, uh, these markets are getting very, very tight and they're just gonna continue to get tight. So this whole inflation thing and the Fed really pointed to that oil price phenomenon, that, that sort of pseudo semi crash that we had in November and December. And that's, you know, a lot of that was political. We know that Trump put pressure on the Saudis, on MBS. That was that, that period in time when that whole MBS killing happened. Um, I'm sorry, the Khashoggi killing happened. Uh, and uh, Trump was... Um, covering for MBS, Mohammed bin Salman of the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. So all that was going on and then at the same time he kind of 
turned around and stabbed him in the back by uh, issuing waivers to seven countries. Remember the, the Iran waivers that allowed, he said, look, you got to pump more oil because we're putting all these sanctions on Iran and the Saudis agreed. And as soon as they agreed, what did he do? What did Trump do? He issued waivers to seven countries. That's another thing. Those waivers are expiring in May. All right. So in another month, basically, those waivers expire. So a lot of factors. So all this factors into the inflation outlook. By the way, yesterday um, I did send out uh, some recommendations on treasuries. I, I think I spoke about that. When the 10-year yield several weeks ago hit 275, I said that was the top in the 10-year yield because the Fed obviously is holding rates at 2.5%. You're not going to get a big high fluctuation over you know, 2.5%. I said you have to buy treasuries at that point. In other words, short the yield. The yield came down. Yesterday I said it's at 250, 251. Now you have to sell the treasuries now. Buy the yield. It's going back up. And we did see it start to tick back up today. Stock market is on track. Uh, the fiscal support is there. Remember, what I do is very, very unique. It is based on MMT. I look at fiscal flows, I look at bank credit um, in a way that nobody really looks at or nobody really understands for that matter. You know, the, this, this insight that I have on the movements of uh, bank reserves into the banking system, out of the banking system, the effect on bank assets, uh, that is very, very important and it's absolutely tradable on a short term and on a longer term basis. And of course this whole entire time the main fundamental factor has been the enormous fiscal flows which have been supporting the economy. And while we might get a slowdown in the first quarter, at least that's what the forecasts are, that's going to turn around. That is going to turn around and a lot of that slowdown in the first quarter was based on, I guess you could say, um, the, the, the collateral damage from the government shutdown, but all that stuff is starting to reverse. I see it in the numbers. Now, the numbers I look at are real-time numbers. Everybody else is looking at data which is 30 days old or uh, uh, from a quarter behind. And I said that the stuff that I look at, that does not emanate from the economy. That creates the very conditions that drive the economy. Everyone else is looking at data which comes from the economy. So that's like second derivative. That already happened. What I'm looking at are the things that literally drive the economy. The fiscal flows, the credit creation, that sort of stuff. So that's all MMT understanding. You could look, by the way, if you don't have an MMT understanding and you look at the exact same thing that I'm looking at, you will have the wrong interpretation. How do I know? Because I see out there. I see how all of mainstream eco uh, economics gets it wrong because of the wrong understanding. You need to have the MMT understanding to know how uh, those factors are going to impact the economy and ultimately that will impact all the markets in one way or another. So yeah, that's where we are right now. Stock market, and some stocks are already making new highs. They have recovered. Have you seen Nike? Have you seen Intel? These stocks are already making new highs. They have recovered from the sell-off in November and December, which of course I told everybody that was a correction and not the start of anything uh, major negative. Now, Later on this year, and I um, kind of alluded to this yesterday, I kind of mentioned this, later on this year, September, October, a number of factors coming together which could possibly set up a scenario where this long bull market that we've been in maybe turns around. But we don't know yet. But if you just look at kind of what's out there on the horizon in terms of the 2020 fiscal year budget in terms of what the Fed is planning on doing with uh, ending balance sheet roll-off. All of this stuff uh, could very well shape a new 
set of fundamentals you know in the fourth quarter and beyond uh, which would lead into the presidential election year so it's going to be very interesting but for now stock market moving higher inflation will be on the rebound everyone thinks it won't gasoline prices oil prices heading back up yields heading back up the dollar I spoke uh, briefly about that and uh, just to uh, put aside any confusion that there might have been the longer term picture for the dollar is down the actions by the Fed yesterday and in January kind of put a, a some breaks on the dollars decline alright it, it threw in a kind of a supportive element to the picture but you still have record fiscal you still have record current account deficits so those are negative factors going to be impacting the dollar that's it for now. See everybody tomorrow. Bye-bye.